Hey, I'm Bob, and I like to make stuff. Today, I want to show you my new CNC machine and explain why it's more realistic to have one of these than you might think. Now, before I get started, I want to say that this is not an advertisement. I have no association with the company that makes this. So this is just purely my opinion and my experience with having it so far. I want to try to give you an overview of what it's for, how it's used, and some of the pitfalls that you might run into when you're using it. So let's get to it. This is called the ShapeOco 2. It's made by Inventables.com, and it's an open source CNC machine. And that means that you can download the plans for this thing, and you can buy each one of these parts from any source that you want and put together this exact same machine. But the cool thing is that Inventables has a kit with everything you need to put the machine together yourself. Yes, you have to put the machine together yourself, which is part of why it's one of the lesser expensive CNC machines. Normally you would expect to get into a CNC for like several thousand dollars, but in this case, you can buy this full thing, everything that you see right here, in pieces for $649. Now when I say pieces, I mean it comes with like a hundred little plastic bags of washers and screws and different types of screws and different types of washers and nylon spacers and all the stuff. Everything is in a little bag, but everything is exactly what you need. You know everything works, and everything fits, and everything is machined really nicely. All the parts are really quality. So when you go to put the thing together, separately you have to build the carriage for the tool to sit on, you have to build the carriage for this tool to move on this axis, you have to build these end plates, you have to build all these components, and then everything ends up sticking together. So it took about a week, about an hour a night, just kind of doing it while I was watching TV. So there is some time involved, but there's also a really good forum with lots of tips and lots of active users that help you if you have any trouble, any problems putting anything together. Now obviously mine's already put together, so I'm not going to show you any of the construction but it is a little bit tedious to put this together because there's so many little washers and spacers that fit and you have to make sure you get the right ones and you have to make sure that everything is tensioned correctly and tight enough and square. So you end up having to mess with it a fair amount after you've got it assembled to get everything square and everything level and everything tight. But I will say that all the materials are really quality. These are powder coated steel plates on the end. You have aluminum extrusion rods for the slides for everything to move on. And this is actually called Maker Slide and it's something that I think is unique to Inventables.com. And it's a really useful metal extrusion that you can use for really any application. After you've got the hardware assembled, then you have to do the electronics. And they're actually pretty simple. There's four motors. You have one on each one of the outside of the Y axis. You have one that moves the X axis back and forth and then you have one up here for the Z that moves the tool up and down. The wiring is really straightforward and everything runs down to this shield which then attaches to an Arduino. And if you don't know what an Arduino is, it's a microcontroller that helps you easily interface with things in the real world, sensors and motors and stuff like that without having a big background in electronics. The ShapeOco comes with the Arduino itself, which you can buy separately for about $25, and the shield that lets you connect to all the motors. The Arduino comes with the software it needs pre-installed, so really all you have to do is wire this up, plug these together, and you're ready to go. There's no hardware programming you have to know, or you don't have to understand how to talk to motors or anything like that. Everything you need is already on here. So let's talk about the cutting tool. This is basically an off-brand Dremel. It's just a rotary tool with an eighth inch bit. According to Inventables, this machine should be able to cut soft metals like aluminum and brass, along with wood and acrylics. The cutting tool is only part of that cutting process, though. A lot of the cutting power has to do with how fast or slow the machine is moving the tool through the material. I found right off the bat that I had to slow my cuts way, way down because this was getting bound up and not actually cutting. It was ended up dragging through the wood instead of cutting through. I think that's something you just have to play with with your material and find a speed that works with the particular material that you're using. So in my experience, I got the machine put together and I thought, well, everything's tight, everything's working, so now I can just go plug it in, use the software, and cut something. And I found right away that even though the machine is good quality, I put it together. And I've never put together a CNC machine before, so I had a lot of things that were not square, a lot of things that were not as tight or as lined up as they needed to be. And so I found right off the bat that my cuts just were not right. They were dragging, they were a little bit out of alignment, the straight lines were not actually straight, and so I had to spend a couple of days going back and making sure that each one of these axes were level, they were square to each other, they were square to the tool, and that everything is held in place tight enough that when it starts digging into the material, this doesn't move. So if you put one of these together, assume that you're not finished yet. You have to spend the time tweaking it and getting it set up, just like you would any saw or any other big tool. 
The cool thing about this being an open source machine is that it's made from pieces that you can already get in any different size. So not only can you slide through a really long piece through the middle because there's no rails, if you wanted to you could replace these or these with longer rods. So you theoretically could turn this into a 4 foot or 8 foot CNC machine pretty easily. One of the first upgrades I did, which is really small, but I added a knob to the top of this so that I could turn the Z-axis by hand to move the bit right down on top of the material. After that, I got some threaded inserts from Amazon and I drilled holes in this MDF waste board. I put in the threaded inserts about every two inches so that I can put some hold down clamps on here to hold the material in place while it's being cut. Also from Amazon, I got some knobs that are on a threaded rod and they fit into these inserts. I used the CNC machine itself to cut some clamps to use for the hold down. And there's just more and more upgrades you can do to this thing. Basically every part of it is upgradable. If you want to replace the motors with bigger stepper motors, you can do that pretty easily. You can replace the Arduino and the power source with something bigger if you wanted to use something different. You can really upgrade just about every part of it, especially the tool. Replace Replacing the tool seems to be one of the most common upgrades because I think people are just initially satisfied with this, but once they start really using the machine, they find out that this is not powerful enough. Now, of course, Inventables does offer an upgrade kit for the spindle itself. They have a quiet spindle that comes with everything you need to hook it up to the new motor shield and all that stuff, but I didn't get it because it's like $200, and on top of the cost of this, just upgrading the tool. $200 seemed like too much for me. So instead, I bought a DeWalt compact router that I'm gonna mount in here pretty soon. I'll probably save that for another video. I wanted to show you the stock machine as it stands before I go messing with any of the major components. So that's mostly the hardware end of things, but there's a whole nother side to CNC. There's the software side. On your Mac or PC or whatever, you design your 2D or 3D file that you wanna cut, and then you have to go through a couple of different pieces of software to get it converted into instructions for this machine to understand, which is called G-Code. The Arduino board that comes with this is the link to the computer. It has a USB port here, and it plugs right into a normal USB port on your computer. I'm not gonna talk about the software in depth or show you any of that in this video, but if you have interest, let me know in the comments and I can do another video on it. But basically, your Mac or your PC sends control instructions over the USB to the Arduino. Then the Arduino converts that into instructions for the motors itself and tells each motor when and where to move, how much, and at what speed. Honestly, the software side of things is probably a little bit more of a hassle than the hardware. There are several options out there that are open source, that are free. There's even one that's made by Inventables. It's called easel.com, and I've used it a bit and it's all browser based. It lets you design and send directly to the machine from your browser, so that's nice. But if you want to get into a more complex cutting, you're gonna need some higher end software. So in my opinion, if you are interested in CNC and you want to get into one, this machine or a couple other that are similar to it are a great way to get in for not a lot of cost. Yes, $700 is not really cheap, but when you compare it to the higher end CNC machines, you're talking about a several thousand dollar difference between this and those. Also, the upgradability of this one makes it a really good candidate to grow with you as your interest and your needs grow. I've been happy with it so far, and I think anyone that goes down this route and gets this machine, you need to be prepared to have a little bit of frustration getting it set up and getting it ready to go. I think once it's ready to go, it will be solid, and it's made from quality materials, so I think it'll last a long time. On top of that, the community around this type of open source hardware for 3D printers and CNC machines like this, that community is growing constantly, and so the resources are just exploding all over the internet and so you have access to all sorts of knowledge and all sorts of you know, schematics and plans and everything you need to be able to use this effectively. I know that was a really high level overview of this machine but hopefully it was helpful in some way and if you have more specific questions let me know in the comments below or on Facebook or on my site or on Twitter or on Instagram whatever. If you want to see this machine in action you can watch my clock video here or you can check out some of my other project videos. If you found this video helpful at all be sure to like it down there so that I know that it was useful to you and if you know somebody else who's interested interested in CNC machines, be sure to share it with them. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time.